High on the hills to the lonely at ole 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 Like normal, I am wearing a cool top and still wearing my pajamas on the bottom. <laughs> it is a gloomy old day in New Zealand today. Oh, it's freezing too. I'm wearing my gearish jumper and sitting right in front of the window to try and catch the tiny little bit of natural light there is out there. And I've lost my tripod, so today's video is brought to you by Two Pumpkins. So here's a little video I've made especially for the yurt curious out there. The kind of questions I get asked about the yurts tend to be very specific. And so I kind of thought I would do a video that is quite specific. Specifically, <laughs> I'm like trying to see how many times I can say specifically in one sentence. <laughs> specifically about how the yurts compare. So how does our great big massive yurt that we live in full time compare to our extra little yurt, the yurt we used to live in. It's quite a lot smaller and is made in New Zealand. Would I recommend purchasing this one or that one? Hopefully you'll have a good sense of that by the end of this video. First of all, we love living in a yurt. It is so beautiful. Both of our yurts are just the most lovely sacred space. There's something really, really special about living in the round. It appeals to something deep down, I reckon, in human nature. They're also incredibly affordable. I mean, they are expensive, it's an expensive outlay, but compared to a house, or even a tiny house, or a bus, or a fancy caravan, this is quite an economical option. This year is a Pacific year, it came from America, it's nine meters, but it's also got the added height put in. So we have a mezzanine, which makes this a massive amount bigger than our little yet, which is only six meters, but feels quite a lot kind of smaller because it doesn't have that extra space. So there's a massive difference in size. So if you're wanting to live full time in a yurt, I would really go as big as you can go. So even though we have got the bigger yurt and we've even got a mezzanine in it, it still feels quite small. So we kind of built ourselves like a little undercover area, kind of like a porch. It means that you don't have to go outside when you go to the toilet. And we kind of thought that we might grow plants there and it would be generally like a nice kind of extra place but actually what has happened is that all of the random stuff that we don't have a place for just kind of ends up out there and it is quite hideous it's like the bit of the house that I'm quite ashamed of but I can't really envision us getting in on top of it because the truth is there's things out there that I don't know where they go they don't have a home in the yurt another really big difference between the yurts is the fabric they are made out of so our yurt here is a hundred percent synthetic so it's made out of like a kind of plasticy, plasticky fabric on the outside and the insulation is basically that foil blanket that you wrap around people when they're in shock. Um, I like you know when they're or when they're really freezing cold. I can't remember what it's called. It's like they call it like NASA approved insulation. Do you know the stuff I'm talking about? It's like silver. And it's basically that all the way around and all over the roof and then like a plastic outer layer. Whereas our little yurt, our New Zealand made yurt, is made out of um, canvas, a natural canvas. And the um, lining is a kind of wool mix. So it's a really thick lining and then the inside bit is also just canvas. So it feels different. It has a much more natural sound when it rains and when the wind blows. It feels nicer, I think it looks nicer. It's generally, it feels a bit more natural. Like when the wind blows here, it kind of crinkles, like <laughs> as if it's like the wind is blowing through like one of those big tin foil blankets, which it kind of is. <laughs> I mean, it's not that noticeable. It's probably quite a minor detail. And the truth is, um, it's really easy to wash this place. Like when we get a bit of mould on the inside here we can just wash it off and on the outside if you cared you could in theory just kind of like wash it but we haven't really done that yet and I know that we kind of do need to do that. We can just kind of foam up a brush and wash the kind of 
dirt off the outside of it. Whereas our little yurt, the natural canvas, is it's impossible to clean. You really can't clean it very easily. And it's covered in pollen. We had it under a tortilla and all the pollen from the tree went all over it. And we've been in touch with Jaya and they're like, no, nah, that's just normal. That happens to in New Zealand. There's heaps of pollen and it goes onto canvas. And it kind of sucks because it actually looks like mold spores. So um, whenever we have people over for Airbnb, I kind of feel like I need to explain. It's not covered in mold, it's just pollen, but it doesn't really look that good. So there is actually a downside to the natural material, even though it feels a bit nicer. Even though the insulation here is kind of space age, I don't think it works as good as the thick kind of woolly insulation that we have in the little yurt. The little yurt heats up really quickly, obviously it's smaller, but it heats up quickly, it holds its heat, heat better, whereas our big yurt can take up to two hours to heat up fully in the winter so often we just stay in bed for ages. The insulation doesn't feel quite as hardcore as it does down there and we're kind of thinking in the future maybe if we can get round to it we might even add more insulation to the Big Yurt. It's quite a big project though. Probably the thing I love most about the Big Yurt compared to the Little Yurt are the real windows. So if it starts to rain or it gets a bit cold you just walk up to the window and you shut the window or if you're a bit hot you just open the window. <laughs> I know, that probably feels like nothing to you because you've all got windows. <laughs> but after living in a little yet, when it starts to rain, you have to run outside and unzip, roll down the windows and they're plastic and the zip can jam a little bit and it, oh, you get quite flustered and they're just annoying. I really, really don't like those plastic roll-up windows down there. Uh -uh, for the little yet on that. I love also that we've got two doors in the big yet. So we've got French doors, for like the main entrance and then at the back we've got back door which leads to our toilet and another really big difference is that our big yurt has um, a kind of perspex top which you can hook up to a big long stick and wind open and that is the thing that makes the biggest difference when it's boiling hot so you just literally get the stick wind it up and all the heat just goes vroom out of the yurt it's really cool Whereas the little yet, it does have an open top that is very, very beautiful, but you do have to go outside and open it and shut it and it's all with the ropes and it's quite a lot more complicated. Obviously in the winter, you don't really want to have the top open very often, so it feels quite dark in there. Whereas our big yet always feels really bright and beautiful because you have, um, the light coming in nearly at all times from the roof bit. So those are the big differences if you are yurt hunting. Um, if I could recommend something, if you're not gonna go for the extra mezzanine kind of height and you just kind of want a big floor space, whatever, I would get the biggest locally made yurt you can find and then I would actually add my own real windows so the windows for this big yurt, you'd think they'd be round, but they're actually not. They just have a kind of square structure and then it's just a standard double glazed window just pushed into it. And that's what I would do. I would, so if I was doing it all again and wasn't worried about a mezzanine, I'd just get a massive gyre yurt and then I would install my own windows and a second door. I reckon that would just be like the dream yurt kind of a complicated thing. I mean, I suppose it's like buying a house. You wouldn't think they'd all be that different, but they really are. And some of those small differences can feel quite big when you're living in one full time. But hopefully this video has been helpful for some of you out there. Maybe like 0.0000008% of the YouTube population. <laughs> <laughs> but you know whatever thank you so much for watching if you found this helpful give it a thumbs up share with me your your yurt dreams if you have one <laughs> and if you want to join my patreon community i would love to see you over there there's a link in the box below stay radical and much love to you wherever you are Bye.